something about almost like a collision course with my elder brother here. He's helping Bangladesh uh, that needed uh, the power uh, supply and he's helping there. Uh, my name is Raihan Islam Chaudhary. I came in this country in 1981 as a student. I went to Texas and did my MBA and then I did my CPA in Texas, and I worked almost 34 years uh, in a company. Uh, medical field might know is called Hospital Corporation of America, one of the largest company, healthcare company in the world, and retired as a CFO. And last three, four years, I have been working in the ranch and farm operation. And we are one of the pioneers uh, in starting an operation which is environmentally friendly. It's very difficult uh, to do that, but we are, we are moving forward. Really. I have been working in the USA after my retirement in the coal area. And I have realized that the coal and fossil fuel is the main culprit for the global warming. And out of this fossil fuel, coal is almost like 40% they contribute to the global warming and they emit the, uh, the greenhouse gases. We have been working in Texas and also West Virginia, primarily. And in Texas, we were able to close one coal power uh, plant in Texas. And we work al along with uh, Beyond Coal program by the Sierra Club. And we work together. And since I'm from originally from Bangladesh, and my route is there. Uh, and it, so I got involved with some activities in Bangladesh lately. I have gone to Bangladesh about four years ago and met with uh, uh, government officials and also chief of the Navy to see whether we can start a LNG project to counter the coal. As you all know, Bangladesh is uh, one of the climate vulnerable countries. And our Honorable Prime Minister is the president of the CBF, or Climate Vulnerable Country Forum. So when she approved all these coal plants, of almost like a 13 of them, she was not, we believe, she was not very familiar with the negative consequences of the coal. But since she, she became president of the CBF, or Coal Free and the Climate Vulnerable Country, she canceled nine of the projects that has not started the operation, like that was in the pipeline. So we have been pressing PM office to see if these four plants already underway, construction almost one is finished that can be converted to LNG. I have visited Matarbari coal plant about two years ago. Extensively, I looked at the construction. Two years ago, I have seen about 25% of the construction completed, one of the largest coal plant in Bangladesh. So, infrastructurally, almost 70% are same you use LNG or coal. So the cost-wise, I think it's still reachable to convert it. But 
what happened in last two years, situation has changed with the COVID and also at least latest the war in Ukraine. But we're still trying, we did not give up the hope. We don't want LNG either, because LNG is also a fossil fuel. But we believe that LNG is a transitional solution to the countries who are facing difficulties meeting the power needs. I actually took a project of LNG I had the investor. Uh, Mitsubishi was willing to fund it. And we were uh, planning to work with uh, Qatar for LNG import. But when I got involved with the environmental activities, when I learned that it's also going to contribute to global warming, and I backed off. Our company backed off. Because I don't want to be part of the company that is going to contribute to the global warming at my later stage now. So, uh, let me look at my notes a little bit. I have been actively involved with the environmental activity work. I was in Scotland, Glasgow last year in November uh, called COP26, which is uh, organized by the United Nations. And I spoke there. The one thing we noticed that the global crisis we are facing now is actually exacerbated by the Industrial Revolution about several centuries ago. And the benefit of the Industrial Revolution enjoyed by the global north, what we call, which is the West and the USA, they enjoyed the benefits. And who suffered? is the Global South, a country like Bangladesh. So why would we pay for the benefits of the Global North? That's not fair. And I know this planet is not fair. The system is not fair. But since they created the mess, they have to fix it. They promised us in Paris that they are going to contribute $100 billion a year. This all promise. We haven't seen anything like that. They did not come even close to it. They promise, they do not follow through. We have seen the same thing in, in Glasgow, Scotland. They are promising, they tried to include India and China, they did, but they watered down the, the agreement. Okay, now things get even worse now because of the war in Ukraine. The European, they promised they're going to get rid of coal between 2030 to 2050. The Germany almost closed the coal plant. Now they are thinking of reopening because of the global crisis resulted from the Ukraine war. I would say to them, this is the time to start the renewable energy more and more, especially in the wind energy again. Don't go back. It's not the time to walk back. So we're going to go on COP27 in this November, and we're going to demand that. The Europeans and the Americans enjoyed the war benefits after the Industrial Revolution, and why would we going to suffer from that? Okay, another thing is that economic progress. We all care about the GDP growth, GDP growth, right? We are also for GDP growth. That's why we are here. There are some investors, a lot of you know, businessmen working for GD, uh, you know, gross domestic product growth. But we have to remember one thing. We have only one planet to live. We do not have a planet B. This planet cannot support the growth we are going through now. We have start seeing that in Bangladesh, as latest in Pakistan, what's happened. So, this is a finite planet. We cannot have infinite growth. That's what we believe. But at the same time, 
We are not against the economic growth. Economic growth has to be balanced with the planet, environment, and also it must benefit all. Is economic growth enjoyed by only top 10% of the population in the world? We know that 1% of the rich people enjoy own more than 50% of the wealth in the world. That's not fair. And in, in Kassel Bajar or in Bangladesh, southern area, they are facing the, the, the climate crisis and we are creating Elon Musk. That's not fair. It has to be fair. So what I'm saying that we want economic growth. We like to have the economic growth in all over the world, including Bangladesh. Bangladesh is an example of what they have shown from the poorest country in the world. Now they're almost like a 37th in the GDP ranking. We are proud of that. But again, same thing in Bangladesh. How many, the, the poor people are not getting benefit of this development. That's not right. The same thing, 1% of the population is Bangladesh worth or enjoy and, and the more, more than 50% of the wealth. And now we are starting to see something new. They're grabbing the lands. All the investors in the name of development grabbing the lands of the poor people. Let me give you an example. In Matarbari, when they are acquiring the land, these poor families, they have to leave their forefathers' graveyard because of the power need of Bangladesh. Now, who is going to get this benefit? People like me, or who are living in Dhaka or Chittagong, or the rich people, they, they have to have the air condition in their house, and who is paying for it? It's the poor people who have to leave their land, leaving their graveyard of their forefathers. We have a solution to that. You might say, Mr. Chaudhary, you're telling us all the problems. What is the solution? How, how do you solve all this? We have a solution. It's a renewable energy. Okay, now, we can say, wait a minute, it's not going to work. In the last five years alone, the cost of renewable energy came significantly down. At the same time, the efficiency went up. One wind uh, turbine can produce now 14 megawatt to 16 megawatt uh, power. It was unheard of even five years ago. So if we set up the, with the wind farm in Bangladesh, we feel that wind farm is the solution for Bangladesh. Because we are lucky to have the bare Bengal around us. So European, especially the England, the country has the, the ocean around or water around, they are setting up wind farm. So to to generate 1.6 gigawatt of energy, we only need 100 turbines. And where we're going to set up is in the Bay of Bengal. We don't have to take land from anybody else. We don't need land. We don't need to throw out the poor people from their villages. Another thing is that Solar. We have to understand one thing. Bangladesh is a land scarce country. Solar needs a lot of land. So we feel like solar is the off-grid solution. If a house can have a solar or any can have a solar, it cannot be connected to the grid. But the wind energy can be connected to the grid. So I think the solution for Bangladesh, the future, is the wind. And if anyone interested here, or you can you know, spread the word around, that we have been talking to a Chinese company. It's called Mingyan. 
they are coming up with a uh, turbine that produces one turbine can produce 16 megawatt. We're talking with them. If someone is interested, anyone want to invest in it, we all need 100 uh, turbines to produce 1.6 megawatts. So if you can have wind farm about 10 of them, that will produce a lot of, lot of energy for Bangladesh. And same thing here in the US. I know we're fighting against the bill our similar mansion is working on, and we, uh, we, we want to make sure that bill doesn't pass. He tried it last two weeks. We are sending all the most to the senators here so that it doesn't pass. Okay, sorry about that. You know, uh, he's limiting me to the 10 minutes. Okay, thank you very much. I want to finish with one word, or two words. Our Rasul, Muhammad Sallallahu said, the last deed what you can do is plant a tree. I want to add one more. Our Mahatma Gandhi said, this planet can support everybody's need, not everybody's greed. Thank you.